Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm presenting our paper, Heterogeneous Knowledge Grounding for Medical Question Answering, with retrieval of community large language model. Uh, here is an example of our task. The goal is to generate a, a short answer for the medical question. Here is an example. This question describes the symptom for a three-year-old boy. This three-year-old boy is brought to the physician by his parents because of fever and they were rash for six days. His temperature is 60, 68 Celsius. Examination shows red-sided uh, anterior uh, cervical lymphadosophy uh, and the rest of symptoms. The goal is to generate a short answer to describe what's the most uh, common complication of this patient's condition. The ground truth answer is uh, uh, containing six, six, seven word blocking antibody attack on the O antigen. So currently the large language model um, doesn't uh, uh, expertise in so extensive medical related question. So the method we are proposing is to ground the language model on the knowledge corpus. In this paper, we not only consider either textual corpus or knowledge base, we consider both of them. The existing work only consider one out of two choice. The text for the textual corpus, we construct uh, um, passages out of a medical textbook. There are 51 textbooks from the medical QA dataset. This dataset is uh, proposed in 2021. They are designed uh, at the official preparation materials for the medical licensing exams. After processing the passages, we can extract uh, around 200,000 passages for this textual corpus. And for the structured uh, knowledge source, we build a knowledge base based on disease database. This database uh, is proposed in 2021. Uh, we basically uh, follow the rules to extract uh, the medical triplet. After processing, there are 50,000 triplet in the uh, knowledge base. Here is the flow for our proposed uh, pipeline. There are a few steps. Uh, the, in, the original input is the question, and there are around 145 words in total. Given this question, the first step is to generate a, a retrieval query. So our first step is to rewrite the original lengthy question into a short and a concise query. This compared the original query and uh, the question, we can see there is a big difference regarding the number of words. The query is more concise and uh, it only consists of 25 words. The reason why we want to generate this uh, short query is we want to better integrate uh, this task with uh, the uh, existing off-the-shelf retrievers. By given this short query, the retriever can have a better sense what's the most important part of the question to focus on. So we, we can retrieve more relevant uh, knowledge source. Given this query, um, as the input to either dense retriever or sparse retriever, we can return we, we can return the relevant uh, passages from the textual corpus listed here. Here is one example of the retrieved uh, passage. It's uh, fluent in natural language. And for the knowledge base part, the returned um, are medical triplet, we can see it contains three things. The first uh, is uh, the subject. The second one is the relation name. The last part is uh, the object. After retrieval from the um, textual corpus and the uh, structured uh, knowledge base, next step is to generate this short answer. So we prompt a large language model again by providing the original question and the retrieved uh, uh, corpus, we prompt the language model to generate the short answer. And uh, we also show uh, the prompt we send to the large language model to generate uh, a search query and the final answer in the next two slides. Here is an example to generate uh, such a search query. 
by giving a very simple instruction, write a search query that will help answer a complex question, following follow the following format, and then we feed the language model the question, and then ask the language model to generate in a chain of thought style. In this rational part, we ask the language model to think step by step to answer this question, we need to find out uh, what kind of the missing information. And then we will generate uh, the final query. So this will be a simple question for seeking the missing information. After generate uh, the short query and uh, collect uh, the retrieved uh, knowledge source, the next part we will prompt the language model to generate a short answer. So compare this second prompt with the previous uh, prompt, we can see um, there is an additional element, which is the context. This context part, we will fill in the retrieved knowledge information. Here comes the, the evaluation part. We use the MetQA US MLE dataset as our benchmark. Here is the simple stats breakdown for this dataset. There are three split for this data set, training, development, and test. But for uh, our work, we only inference on the large language model. So we only evaluate on the test split. It consists uh, around 1,000 examples. For the evaluation, we consider two sets of evaluation metrics. The first part is a generation level. We consider um, uh, whether the generated answer is uh, similar to the ground truth answer by comparing the exact match F1 and recall. And since there is a retrieval uh, element involved, we also evaluate the retrieval accuracy. Here is uh, the experiment result on different knowledge source grounding using the dense retriever. Uh, and then in the next slides, we will also show some results using the sparse retriever. There are three rows in this table. The first row is uh, retrieval from the structured knowledge source, which is the knowledge base. And the second one is retrieval only from the unstructured knowledge source. In this uh, paper, it's uh, uh, textual corpus. And the last line is uh, we ground the language model on both knowledge source. For the first three columns, uh, those are final answer quality. We can see our proposed work is uh, uh, better than only grounding on one of the knowledge cells. And for the retrieval part, one interesting thing is uh, the when we evaluate how many percentage of the retrieved the triplet consists of the final answer. Um, our proposed methods doesn't outperform the unstructured choice, but after manually exam some example, we actually found that there are more examples consisting of relevant uh, information rather than it consists the exact of the final answer. The previous result shown is using the density retriever. The density retriever has some advantage, like uh, its independence of the vocabulary, and uh, it uh, um, depends on the semantic meaning rather than just uh, the word overlap. However, it's more complex and uh, it costs more. And for the sparse retriever, it used term frequency and the inverse document frequency to compute the relevance of the document to a given search query. Compared to dense retriever, it's more simplified and uh, the speed is uh, pretty fast. It also has some disadvantage. It depends on the exact overlapping of the wording. But uh, due to its uh, fast speed, we also want to show some result if applying this uh, pipeline using sparse retrieval. In this table, uh, we can see there is a significant drop on the retrieval accuracy. Pre in previous uh, table, the retrieval accuracy is around seven, but using sparse retrieval, the accuracy drops uh, a significant uh, uh, portion. It, uh, it's uh, less than two. So in this uh, medical question answering task, we can see choosing or better retriever uh, is a very important step. That's the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. Is there any questions or comments?